Blizzard just dropped a big livestream about the upcoming season 6. I recorded a reaction over on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash Scorpio O W. Make sure to follow if you want to see more reactions like that. And let's get right into the video. 10 seconds. Let's go. Let's get into the live stream. All right. I'm really curious how long the stream actually will be. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Overwatch 2 Invasion Reveal Stream. I'm your host for the day. Are they in the Watch Leaks so studio? Overwatch 2 content to show you. And uh, just a reminder that a lot of the stuff you're going to see today, some of it is finished, some of it is work in progress. So uh, with that said, we work in progress. With okay. Today in our first segment, uh, from Let's the see. Overwatch 2 development team, uh, we have senior game producer Kim Horn and art director Dion Rogers. Matt, How are you guys doing you. today? Good to see you again, hey, man. I know it's, yeah. it's great. It's great. So I, I, I love Dion Rogers. Rogers. We, we've been in a bunch of pieces. He's, uh, he's he's such a nice guy. Ages on Twitter. That's the first time I think we're meeting in person. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, awesome. No, uh, That's no, awesome. it, it's great. And uh, for, with you guys today, we're really gonna you know, get into the invasion story and mm -hmm. you know some of the PVE experiences people are going to have. Okay. So. Uh, Dion, we've actually seen I, I already give before. Blizzard a W uh, if they don't uh, announce uh, any cancellations. <laughs> uh, uh, so sad to say, but with yes. The trailer, you know, everything going on with Invasion is the story mission. So just give us a little bit of a where are we in story terms missions. of the Overwatch story and where is the launching point for this? Okay. Um, yeah, we have an amazing narrative team back at the office that helped put this stuff together. So speaking on behalf of their awesome work they've done and Kim and I have been on this for a while. Mm -hmm. But basically, these are uh, cooperative missions that will finally move the story turn off my in the world of Overwatch forward. My and cam so here. It takes place shortly after Winston's recall. Winston's been trying to get the okay, after Winston's recall. Oh, it's a bunch of oh, look at the map. Around the world. Oh, it's it looks so good. All Ding. these different problems that are right. happening around the world, especially Null Sector has returned. What is that drone? It's interesting, I know, when we were chatting, there's some heroes that, like, canonically in the story haven't met each other, right? some uh, so kind of EMP drone? Okay. The proper canon for Overwatch, we're finally moving the story forward. <laughs> oh, yeah. And in this version of the story, obviously, this is the canon story. Canon Lucio story? Lucio hasn't met Reinhardt yet, so... Lucio hasn't met Reinhardt yet. How these characters okay. Meet each other, what they've been up to while, um, before this invasion. I hope the stream is loud enough. So, yeah. It should be pretty interesting. That's to gotta be so cool for you guys to like be able to write and bring these moments to the game, right? Uh, how do you even like start? Or what that is that process? skin actually? Um, so part of it we start. To Did I make a? Heroes. Is, is, that the, that is that the is that the default skin of Brick, or am I just dumb? Is that a new skin? I I never play Brick. I'm I'm so sorry for all the people that. Is that the default skin? I really I don't know. There, Kim. <laughs> but holy fuck, what is this Omnic? Um, so, it's fun to see oh my how these characters make God. or what they've been up Look at the big guy. The, um, the phase between Winston's recall and now. Yeah, right, damn. Invasion starts. Yeah, so in, in terms of, you know, we're able to see a lot of awesome footage here uh, from Gothenburg, uh, which is one of the invasion story missions. Uh, Kim, from being, you know, on the on the gameplay side of this, like, how do you actually, you know, build out these story missions? Uh, know what were some of the... Oh, yes. Torbjorn's Factory. Yeah, um, oh, what is that turret? Originally based on the Ooh. PvP maps, and um, we decided... As Are those we ice turrets? That, uh, yeah, okay. Something a little more different, a little more fun. What am I looking at? So, you might recognize... No! Things, but it's There's new. pooping turrets? Yeah, I think that's super cool. Cause, uh, no, that's fucking know, funny. Want, uh, the Overwatch people that's now, fucking but, funny. Okay. Uh, you're, you're made them for like that's so cool. You know, mm -hmm. quick play purposes. So many different these tourists. Are completely different purpose, cool. right? In right. terms of story missions. So, uh, when you guys kind of went back and looked at some of those areas, you know, where were some of the things you wanted to expand on in terms of things you probably couldn't do with PvP? Right. Um, so we both wanted to balance gameplay choices versus the what did we want to do with the story. Mm -hmm. So for example, Rio makes a great location because it's connected to one of our heroes, Lucio. Mm -hmm. And you get to witness how he feels to see an invasion happening in his hometown, basically. Exactly. But we also, each mission has a slight difference in gameplay that we wanted to achieve um, from a cooperative perspective. And so okay. it meant we needed to build newer maps to, to really balance the gameplay plus the story yeah that's what they said like they 
they did like a big overhaul of the maps like look at that 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 doesn't look Something like Rio de Janeiro anymore. At least, terrible. not like yes. the PvP version. But you actually might want to duck in there to hide from an enemy. Yeah, P yeah, a tunnel in PvP. Uh, no, I, I'd, I'd be. I'd oh wait! In the 2019 <laughs> BlizzCon <laughs> thing, you <laughs> wasn't <laughs> Echo flying the plane? Have some more fun, a little bit more creativity, like different more enemy open. types. Yeah. yeah. Wait, Echo was flying the plane. We're able to do um, okay. things that just would make PvP. Now Brick is flying it. Exactly. I mean, and they look incredible. I mean, just uh, kind of seeing some of the footage here uh, from Rio, just the, the just lighting, the and then uh, this guy. I saw him in the trailer. I, I, I oh think my he's god! Up. Yeah, I mean, uh, he he looks he looks. It's just tough. a I can't ball. It's, it's just yeah. transformers. Yeah, I'm super stoked uh, to jump in and see Fucking some transformers and different types of things that you guys have. Uh, Kim, I gotta ask on the on the gameplay side, like, what was some of the other what was like the most fun part about being able to kind of craft into these story missions? Um, a lot of the fun, uh, one of the most fun things I think is uh, the dialogue in between the heroes. Mm -hmm. um, you get to know the heroes and their interactions a lot more. Um, it's already a, a favorite thing of mine in <laughs> PvP, but right. it, it, we really get to throw a lot more in PvE. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you kind of hear like all the uh, the dialogue that goes on yeah. with like uh, you know, voice lines in the spawn room and uh -huh. you know. Uh, PvP. Wow. So I mean, it's like yeah, a complete really overhaul cool. of the you know, PvE, current map. Uh, in terms of getting more kind of story, a little with bit more. Brand different. new areas, uh, which is design, so you know, cool. Obviously, you mentioned that the PvP spaces, some of these are based on, change drastically. Uh, you know, how how big should we expect them? You know, the different types of environments that you guys wanted to create. Oh, these are a lot bigger than yeah. our PvP maps, so. Um, there's a ton of stuff to explore. I don't know if we have a good comparison, but they're four or five times bigger than yeah. oh, wow. any people. Four or five times game. bigger. Just for the <laughs> yeah. um, cinematic vistas and longer sight lines, just things that just would totally yeah. break the balance of PvP. Right. And it's so fun to see what we can do. You know, the team's been itching to do this kind of thing for a while. And, and then I guess with the longer sight lines and stuff like that, like it allows you to kind of play with the different enemy types, yes, right? Exactly. That you can see during um, that. Like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. any, anyone we should look out for that we don't want to go up against? I mean, we have uh, seen that already. That, yeah. 2019, <laughs> 2019 BlizzCon, so... so um, Nothing using new. your team comp to balance, like, who needs to deal with the... I want to see more of Gothenburg. ...versus um, the grunt is pretty dangerous up close. It, 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 there's this fun balance of the level design right. plus the units um tactical abilities plus the powers that and our this, overwatch heroes have yeah, yeah. i mean the, the art that uh you no know, we we got from this i mean this looks uh you know that looks like gothenburg to me uh -huh. i'm not an expert home but, to torbjorn yeah uh, oh my home god to gothenburg I mean, this looks, uh, super cool. oh, this look at those turrets imagine he had some uh, one of that in game in pvp you'll find out yeah the play to <laughs> this guy but uh, we're trying some new stuff. You know, Torbjorn gains a few new turrets during oh. the story mission, so... Um, it is probably the we'll ice turret, yeah. yeah. That's the ice turret. There, yes. <laughs> yeah, as, uh, That's probably the poop <laughs> turret we saw before. You guys put in is just uh, tremendous uh, for this types of content. What What is, like, some of the... And I guess this is a... Oh, my God, the concept art! Look, look at that! Like, uh, is this, w do you know where this is? Uh, this is in Rio, Ooh. so this oh. is when um, a concept artist named Peter Lee worked on this piece, wow. and... We usually try to um, kind of uh, a, a little script of what we want, would like wow. to see within this. <laughs> this one's interesting because it started off at night, but we kind of changed the setting. And this is a glimpse of some of the other null sector units. They return fully upgraded and <laughs> they're ready to go. <laughs> yeah, they're ready to go. <laughs> okay, uh, the ship. The command ship. This was an iteration by um, Al. Uh, this has to be so fun to work on. Yes, like, yeah. Because, uh, like, what, you have, the, obviously, that moment with uh, Winston's recall, right? And mm -hmm. then after that, you guys kind of have an idea where it's, it's going. It's been a long but, time coming, yeah. but yeah. it feels so good to finally just answer that question uh, that we we created a lot of questions. And we're creating some new questions, but we're getting some answers finally they now. Made a concept so out for a boat? Uh, 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 oh, it's for Toronto. Yeah. Are we going to play on a boat on Toronto? Blown away. Once they see some of the stuff that you guys have been mm -hmm. working on, it's been incredible. One of the other things is actually Another event bro. missions. So uh, story missions, they look amazing, you mm -hmm. know, really kind of build on, obviously, the, the lore, the story mm -hmm. uh, of Overwatch. Uh, event missions. So these are, you know, story missions are now the only PvE thing. Happening. Oh, yeah, the event, event missions. Also 
coming in. Oh, uh, can you explain to me a little bit about what event missions are? Underworld. Yeah, event missions are new. They're coming with season six. Um, they're the highly replayable, repeatable oh. content that mm. you're meant to play after you finish the story mission. So the highly is replayable this, missions. Is this nautical? Is this not? Uh, like, a little bit of both. <laughs> a little bit of both. But okay. We might, want it to be. <laughs> we, we might have a canonical mission uh -huh. in there. We might oh. have one that's not. Um, mm -hmm. I would say the first one. I want to know what they mean with highly highly replayable yeah right. maybe not will we see a small thing of the hero talent tree maybe a small thing yeah. we will see players have seen this in advance yeah there's sneaky players yeah i think they've peeked through some cracks but it's something we always wanted to do is expand on our pvp maps and and build more give another option there was a lot of ideas about this so this is a new branching path that we used during the event i mean we have seen that already that's even in the game Right now. Yeah. And so what what is the gameplay changes between a story mission and an event mission? Like, how should people expect those to play differently? Okay. Um, we have a whole bunch of uh, challenges with story missions. Um, they'll change every week. Um, also, the hero roster you can choose from will be different. So uh -huh. uh, the, the gameplay will change from so week to week. Your objectives, right? yeah. your, oh, your be, challenges. That'll be yeah. super cool. So like a gameplay modifier each week, you know, yeah. with some so different... Not, like, new okay, hero it's going to be right? like the archives right. missions where you had like those different... Yeah. Well, it's, it's, this is Underworld. Where enemies, right. for example, so explode so if you kill the them and the that stuff. Block. Okay, okay. I think I know what they mean. Same enemies, but... You know, you'll fight them in new ways. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah. I, I mean, I we kind of had that before. So uh, today, <laughs> okay, it's in terms of how to deal with that. those missions are like, these, more are like the archives like missions. Awesome. All right, all right, right. I get like, it. You, know, you mentioned like replayability, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of like week to week coming back with a new replayability roster, week right? to week. Uh, different types of modifiers. Not I bad. The, you know, with. Uh, yeah. different enemy modifiers or you know buffs right. or something like that that's that'll be super fun what was the best part about working on this type of stuff is it like getting creative with the modifiers and things like that like yeah definitely and then just figuring out how to make the gameplay really fun when you're playing over and over again uh, it, it's something we play like every day and it, it always ha feels different yeah, I guess was the philosophy going in Underworld, was it to build something that's like highly replayable like yeah, week on week? Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Oh, that's uh, yeah, I mean to and then uh you know to have something like that, I think obviously on top of the story missions, uh, right. I, I think is awesome because people were wondering I'm kinda, uh, like, you know, I'm, I'm kinda story, curious if do, like, more there is a story in this mission as well. There, and then, uh, is this like one difficulty or is it multiple mm. difficulties? How does that we'll see. Uh, There's we multiple have, yeah. difficulties. Multiple diff Yeah, okay. It it's it's okay. actually like the archives missions. Visit, uh, so that's like the new uh, thing uh, of the archives the missions. Map and expand on it. And in PvP, we do place a lot of story, right? Yeah. A lot of mm -hmm. players pick up on a lot of things we do in the PvP maps that are canon to the story of Overwatch. So King's Row made a lot of sense to do it as mm -hmm. an event right. mission because... There's Mandata and... I wonder how often they will drop those missions. Yeah, so a lot of our PvP maps have a lot of story in it, and, and this is what's so great about finally doing this co-op story missions to help answer some of those tidbits of story. Oh, we get more lore around. on that map. Yeah, oh, okay. It, totally. it, it, that was a lot of fun, just digging into that. Yeah. Kind of interesting. I just love, like, the nighttime scary... <laughs> kind of look that King's Row has yeah. uh, you know, over the top uh, Underworld. But uh, another piece of uh, you know, content that's a PV, you know, E, uh, solo playable, uh, is Hero Masteries. Oh, okay, so, the Hero Mastery. Uh, I found out about this a little bit ago, uh, <laughs> and I was like, this, this looks super cool. Yeah. I'm terrible at oh, it. Oh, we uh, see. So explain to me a little Ooh. bit about Hero Masteries. Okay. Uh, solo content, you're meant to play, um, you know, by yourself. Maybe okay. it's late at night and you just don't. What is that buff? Playing, but, oh my uh, god, that's a Giga uh, Chat it's, it's fucking to training bot. Heroes, um, you know, what the maybe, fuck? Uh, a hero you haven't played very much. Very oh my god, this looks so much fun. And you can kind of um, play on your own. Matching doing that over and over and, uh, to get the best uh, score. Play some I see myself doing those well, challenges a lot. The, the <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> I mean, if they are done right and they feel really good for the hero, I mean, they made they made like a hero mastery for every single hero. Now that's gonna be so fucking cool. I'll play it for every single one of them. Just training. It's basically a training simulator or a holographic room. 
win some creator for our hero. <laughs> they made barrels that, uh, that explode. Nice. And you can collect coins. Use it as a way to Interesting. A new hero, you know, a hero that you haven't played before. Yeah, that's super awesome. Okay. Because, like, uh, woven like the story and the universe into uh -huh. like hero masteries right and right it's like, they just, just exist as another thing like in the arcade right like this right. is kind okay, of okay you have a score system, system on the top left right that's yeah. super cool. there's a score then, uh, system yeah, interesting how did you guys go about no I, I think Kim, you were telling the story about like how this kind of came to be uh -huh. right um well what it how it started is a few of us on the team were saying but it's also like a, a kind of a time challenge since you can uh, see like the time up here Hmm. Really in the live game. That'd be interesting. It isn't in ranked play. Uh, not, right. not, learning, <laughs> not, not learning with how yes. to play with us in yes. live. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, well, one thank you. Uh, for, for creating <laughs> Show me more. I don't want, only want to see Winston's, play. please. Uh, and then, too, I mean, I think it's an awesome tool to be able to, for players to train, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to be able yeah. to kind of uh, learn different heroes uh, outside of just playing them in ranked. Exactly. Um, if there's a hero that's your favorite, that's great. But now you can play someone new and maybe kind of get to learn the play style. No, oh, not the Winston clip actually, again. You know, <laughs> I want to see other heroes, please. <laughs> Finally learn to ransom. Right, people. right. Uh, um, I mean, I, 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 every Mercy should have to do a minimum of 10 hours on the course. <laughs> it's before it ranks. Yeah. it's so fun to see um, other people play, you know, and what they do compared to um, your own trials. Exactly. During the, Okay, we will. Yeah, no, I, hmm. I think I think this is super cool. Then, uh, how, how uh, what should we expect uh, when Hero Masteries launch? Okay, that's the Soul Chain so one we'll we've seen before. coming out with season six mid -cycle. Now we uh, see it in detail. The, uh, there'll be a different uh, heroes you can play. Some will unlock different weeks, and um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there'll be scoring, so you can compare your score with. Your Oh, that'll be cool. Okay. Like uh, a little bit of like speed running type of thing, right? Yeah, you're, definitely. You're, 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 oh, yeah, speed yeah, running yeah, type of thing. Let's fucking go. Where, hey, yeah. Oh, I love this action. already. I assume the coins. Holy shit. Your score, yeah. uh, and, and, and uh, after that. And yes. so does time. Yeah, and then this is the this is the mercy one. Is uh, you can tell that one looks like it's a little bit harder uh, yes. than the other ones. That yes. one uh, looked like there was different enemies, right? That right. Able, is it different enemy types in other modes? Yeah. So we made a we made a whole new custom set of bots for this mode. Mm -hmm. um, the fucking Giga Chat bot. Heroes, so yeah, there's a whole bunch of new stuff to learn. Yeah, that's awesome. That you guys like game. They made it this. them red yeah, as well. You know, a kind of like a cool lore piece. It's a little bit of like training to fight, you know, Null Sector, and then obviously gamified it into, mm -hmm. like, a solo PvE type of play. Right. I learned so much playing the Mercy course. I was surprised at <laughs> the things you could do with Mercy Yeah. Uh, coming out of the Hero Mastery. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you know, there's uh, tons of stuff, right, in the arcade, like, you know, you think of, like, the Doom Park. <laughs> oh, my God. Things that, like, try to help you with, like, the movement. And, yeah, you can already tell that... You know, so many players, whether they're new or old, are gonna either learn new different types of skills that you can do with some of these heroes, okay. or just, you know, get better at them, yeah, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, like, Mercy, like, being able to... Oh my god, sniping Mercy, look at that. Form, you know, uh, this person, There's even sniping <laughs> bots? What the <laughs> fuck? Uh, but, like, trying to do this without it, right? And kind of right. learning, like, how to kind of, you know, launch yourself from platform to platform could definitely improve. Wow. You know, tons of players. Okay. Exactly. Each hero will have a different difficulty course. And so I need to say the graphics don't look too bad. I mean, of course, it's not like the polished maps that we know before, but I mean, you don't need it in a mode like that, to be honest. It looks, it looks fine as it is. Trying to set a high score, you know, being able to kind of show off to the rest of your friends. Pretty sweet. I'm... I'm even more excited than I was, you know, before we started, right? About all the <laughs> PvE stuff coming uh, in Invasion. Uh, what would you guys like to say to the community? What are you guys, you know, most excited for them to get their hands on? Yeah, we just... I'm finally excited to just get the story missions out yeah. there. Uh, yeah. and the team has worked really hard on this. and uh, uh, Story missions. The, the canon of Star Overwatch. True. The world and, the, and these heroes. Yep. Um, it, this is... Well, we just loved it and... and glad it's finally making its way yeah we've uh we've poured a lot of blood sweat and tears into this content we've been playing it for years and we're so excited to finally be able to play with our friends and everyone in the community yeah I, i'm i'm excited to jump into the story i uh, see all the awesome cutscenes. scenes kind of learn more mm -hmm. a little bit about where the over i mean i'm glad they going, didn't but, uh, like guys, uh, spoil too much of the today, story uh, first part of this and but they showed like some gameplay i'm happy 
and Daniel McGowan to talk about Flash now the flashpoint let's Stay go you don't want to miss that. oh my god the map CSIS unit 37 Toronto is under attack are they showing us the trailer again <laughs> we already saw the trailer god damn Oh, thank God it's over. Not final artwork. Okay. Okay, Blizzard. Is that the music in game of the map? Hey, Aaron and Daniel. Do I know Daniel? I think I've never seen Daniel. Principal environment artist. Awesome. Okay. So good. Thanks for having us. Oh, uh, no, I mean, I I'm super excited to jump into this. Some of the PvE stuff we What happened to Aaron's voice? And then for me, I, I oh, no. PvP. So, first, I want to go into uh, player progression, Aaron. I know a lot of people have been talking about it online. Oh, you see, I can't wait for the really cool skill. Like. Uh, you might have Storm, a little please. bit of an update. I think I can update players on, yeah, on player why not? progression system. Yeah, so this is going to be coming. What happened to Aaron's voice? And our player progression was he partying too much? Different than the one that Did we he lost his voice? In the original Overwatch, which was just a player level system. Um, this time, what we really want to oh. do is we want to recognize. We get a new level system. Playing the game, but also recognize. Oh, look at that! The way that they play huh? the game. So as people whoa, 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 start wait. playing in almost any of our game modes. They'll start earning experience in this new system, and what they do is they earn it. This looks so complicated. Experience. What the fuck? And we'll be tracking. What was that? Their, um, their play style through a lot of different huh? categories. So it might be things like um, games played, or damage done, damage mitigated, and healing done. And as you do that, you'll okay. level up that particular category and earn an emblem uh -huh. for that hero. And you can continue to earn more emblems ah, for your heroes. So you and can get like a small that, batch um, for they will, um, each hero. Um, like upgrade okay. your hero's level. And so you'll start getting okay, that's cool. badges that's really for your cool. heroes. And the interesting thing about it is you can go into um, your career profile, check out the progression section, and kind of get a story for the way that your particular hero plays the game. Um, an interesting detail here is that what? you don't cap the amount of experience that you oh, can get awesome. in any category. And the reason why we let's do that go. Is we don't want no to cap you to play it in any particular way in order let's to fucking go. your your player progression I love that. in a certain way. We really want it to be about your own play style and to have instead you have to pay for every player progression <laughs> Start plays reflection of the way that they Stop ranting about so over so much. That, we're going to be rewarding name cards through this system. Ooh, so rewarding so name cards progress through um, through these the, the different categories. Let's say you're playing Reinhardt, you'll unlock a Reinhardt name card. But then as you level Reinhardt up more, mm -hmm. you're gonna unlock higher level versions of oh, those name cool. cards. It's the first time we've really had- oh, Only name cards? Name cards. No skins? Yeah, I mean, that's really awesome okay. for people to be able to show off. You know, they're individual heroes. I mean, name right? cards you know, are fine. You level a certain hero, or you're, you know, playing just one hero all the time, right? You can show people, you know, a name card, that kind of thing. Can I not just good you are and how equip my badge? Hero. Uh, I want to talk about I would Flashpoint. prefer to, like, so, uh, equip no, the batch. The that launched, everybody was talking about Flashpoint. Uh, before we jump into, like, some of the details of the mode, uh, tell us a little bit about just kind of the basics. How does Flashpoint play? Sure. So. All right. Flashpoint, the new game mode. It's coming during Overwatch 2 Invasion. It takes place on some of the largest maps that we've ever built These for, look awesome. for <laughs> Overwatch. And How the big are they? play the game mode is okay. the objective for each team is to be the first team to score three points. Um, and the way you score a point is you fully capture an objective. You capture an objective? Um, okay. When you first start in Flashpoint, um, you'll be in the spawn room and we'll randomly choose one of the objectives on the map. Um, and when the spawn door is open, everybody runs out, they go to Make that first to reach, um, that first capture point. The capture Bet points can't do. work no. similar to the way they do in Control. Your team can, can gain ownership of it very quickly, but then mm -hmm. you have to tick all the way up to 100% before you fully own the thing um, okay. and score a point. The interesting thing about the mode, though, is this is, this is where everything kind of changes. So when activate that one, these maps, mm -hmm. like I said, they're, they're really big. So now you'll have these two teams okay, typically traveling in a parallel path to the next capture. This point. looks incredible, by the it's, way. This is an amazing, amazing. Bro, point. those maps. Uh, and so yeah, so holy you'll, you'll shit. Go to a point like that, um, but you'll. 
be traveling next to the enemy team. So you have all these options. Do you want to um, interact with the team there? Do you want to try to get an early pick or maybe an, an early team fight win so you can capture the next point easier? Do you maybe just want to like to try to to try to protect positioning. So maybe you're just gonna try to get to the next point quickly in order to get high ground on it and force the enemy team to kind of pop mm -hmm. in in a, in a less advantageous route. And then okay. you'll fight over the next control point and you'll keep doing that until one of the teams gets three points and they'll win the match. Yeah, and, and I gotta say- So you uh, already know uh, which points amazing. are gonna be uh, active? How difficult was it tackling? Like these these maps are massive, like truly so, so massive. Understand that correctly. Like, hey, we want to keep that Overwatch. You know, level already up know which ones are. I mean, just look at, oh my look God, Junker Town! Look at that yeah, big we, map. Um, well, first what it the took a whole fuck? team effort and a lot of passionate people, but we really tried to push the bar as much as we could with these maps. Right? Um, they're much larger than any other maps that we've built to date. Um, and it actually allows us to bring in a lot more themes, right? So we can push mm -hmm. more narrative. We can show you um, elements of that <laughs> culture that you've never seen before, right? Uh, for example, in Junk City, you, you might even be able to see where the de demolitionist faction reside, right? Um, the center arena, the hammer mill. So um, yeah, we, we put in a lot of love and um, getting it to all you know, fit was very tricky, um, but we didn't want to you know, drop that blizzard quality wow. bar at all, so. It's got to be really cool to be able to kind wow. of explore, you know, we have uh, Junker Town, right? What but a map. that's just a pretty linear path, right? <laughs> it looks, the it goes, already looks so park. big and it uh, just yeah, shows small like little bit. Open landscape. So it must be super fun to jump in with the team and you know, ideate on like how a you know, really kind of like you know, junk city looks, right? Exactly, wow. exactly. We, um, you know, the fans love Junker Town, the developers, we love Junker Town, and we have some great cinematics and we really wanted to explore uh, this fantasy a bit mm -hmm. deeper. And so uh, we had to ask ourselves some really cool questions about, you know, we know what the town looks like, but what if the city, if you're in the heart of it, right, right on top of the Omnium core, um, what would those vistas look like? And um, I think we came up with some pretty good uh, solutions. Yeah, and in terms of gameplay, like Aaron, like how, how do the points, you know, differ, right? You know, uh, obviously we have control as is now, but now with these like large maps, right, you can create different types of points in between those points, like connecting them. Uh, what should players expect? Yeah, so the, these maps are totally different than anything that we've built before. Mm -hmm. And um, they're a big non-linear space, and they're also a quasi-symmetrical layout <laughs> as well. And so okay, they uh, have there, a there's symmetric? a lot of challenges with building these maps. Um, I, as I said earlier, they each have five control points. And when we five control points, okay. game modes, especially game modes for quick play ranked and for esports players um, to, to play on, one of our top goals is to make sure that they're competitive, that they're balanced, and that they're fair. So every one of the control point areas in these maps have a symmetrical layout. It works similar mm -hmm. to the way we do control. So it each make, team makes has sense, the of course. same entrances to it. They have the same amount of cover, the same access to high ground, and even the same run times from their spawn room. Um, and we, we do that very intentionally to make them Yeah, fair. okay, that but, makes but sense. on top of that, when you have all five of these in one big space, as you start moving further away from Oh my space, god, India! The map starts getting less oh symmetrical. Oh my god, that looks so beautiful. And connecting routes that you have between the space. Wow. Because sometimes you might be going from... Big W uh, for the, the artists there. That's ...closest to the enemy team side, and you're pulling back to yours. Or sometimes you might be in one corner going all the way across to the other corner oh, wow. of the map and it's a really long journey and one of our priorities is to to always make it so that players kind of recognize where they are in the map and recognize where they're supposed to go mm -hmm. in the map and so as you as you move from one point to the other and you see that next objective i think that um we spend a lot of time in that flow along the streets and to that next point of interest that you're supposed to go to um, Bro, those maps are fucking gigantic. <laughs> what the fuck? I can yeah, see so yeah, far ahead. It never ends. What the fuck? You kind of get this you know, design, right? Of uh, you know, a map and how it flows. Uh, when you guys jump oh in, you on that, help, you know, and that map, you actually like feel like you're in the fucking city. Holy shit, they are so big map. yeah it's tricky bro um, you know, we have to be very careful with our sight lines for performance um, and, and gameplay and things like that and so what we did is we designed into each of the uh points 
um, very large recognizable elements that you can see from basically mm -hmm. anywhere, right? So okay. um, the center market has a giant tower that you can use to, ah, okay. um, you know, center yourself and, and find out where you are, right? The Omnic Temple uh, goes up into the sky. So um, we've been very conscious about giving the players something uh, on the horizon. I want to see some gameplay. Maybe one match, yeah, just I'm, pure I'm gameplay. I want to see how this mode works. I still don't in. know what they how mean. Do you to play it, right? Do you have like a, a really sick tracer player who maybe can like lurk in some of those like parts of the map? Bro, this right? map is so, so gigantic. It never ends. The other point, what the like, fuck? And, like, try and, like, really try and, like, Bro, Overwatch oh, Bell Royale confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. And like to just kind of so like touch big. on yeah. what you were talking about there too. S since these maps are so big, there are so many little cool locations that you can go to. And I think that like a core skill for an FPS shooter is map knowledge. Yeah. Uh, it's not just about aiming. Overwatch is not just about also team play and ability usage. It's about learning the map. These maps yeah, are a definitely. Lot than anything we've built before, so we think there's probably going to be a longer tail to this learning curve. Um, so it, oh, yes. it might be a little bit more intimidating to jump into a map like this. But at the same time, oh now we see I it. Think that there's this Holy process shit. that you get to go through of learning it and getting better and better over time on one of these maps. Yeah, yeah, I think you'll see lots of really cool stuff. You know, like what, what's the best way to rotate from one point to the other, right? Uh, if you yes. know a team is spawning in one spot, is you know, this the best route to take? Or maybe you take a little bit of a safer route. Uh, is this the other one to kind of work on? Uh, I think there's a ton of, you know, we see it with Push, right? Push came out, was played a certain mm -hmm. way, and then over time that's like changed, I think, with the, a mode like this. And I mean, you see where you can fight in all these different awesome locations. Uh, I, I think it'll definitely change over time. Yeah, definitely. Okay, sorry. Jumping back to like how we how we developed this yeah. mode too. I think that developing new game modes for Overwatch is something that we have started to recognize as core to to running the live game. Um, and, and if you think about the way players experience our game, you select a hero, you load into a map that plays a particular game mode. And all of our mm -hmm. maps are like that. All of our maps are built for very specific game modes. And when you have that sort of constraint on you, when you develop a new payload map, for example, there's only going to be a certain amount of things that you do for a map like that. They're very linear. They're cut into three sections. They have a certain amount of like choke points and run back times I from the spawn I room. still don't and know so how the map works, how the game mode works. The experience that feels a lot different to players on a map requires a new game mode. And so, so that was our intention here was to not just build some new maps, but to, to start evolving Overwatch into the future by building new game modes. Mm -hmm. these, these are the sorts of things that we would like to continue to do for the game. And when you start looking at what our game can be years down the line as as we're releasing things like i mean story fun fact they already like confirmed game modes, that they are going to do more three, core in the future, game modes uh, much, every year much more expansive and much more evolved experience than you have today yeah and i i think just uh you know seeing some of these locations and like building upon the story like we were talking about you know uh, in the past, in PVE, right, with like you know expanding King's Row, and like they obviously we have a Junker Town map, and then see like Bro, new imagine fun, Daniel, for you a guys. game so mode like, like Flashpoint in the right? King's Row setting. Side of things. Absolutely. Um, in Junk City, for example, you can actually see Junker Town. Imagine. Vista, that's cool. Right, we've tried to give some kind of connection to those and call back to the original map because it, it was you know so influential. Um, but we can't talk about Junk City without talking about India first, and that one. You know, uh, we, we built that as an assault map originally, um, mm -hmm. but when we cut to CP, um, we decided, you know, it'd be a perfect opportunity for Flashpoint because we really wanted to represent, you know, that, that location in our world. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that was the first one we built and we learned a lot, which we took to Junk City, right? Yeah, that, that's, that's super cool because, yeah, like, uh, you know, I, I've seen uh, Suravasa, like, uh, firsthand and just the, the locations, I mean, are beautiful. I mean, we just kind of had it on the big screen behind me, but, like, Man, it looks so good. And all the locations are so different from each other. I think that's one of the things that I, I really kind of take when I you know see some of the footage and watch is that uh, 
every point in this feels different, but then also every game also feels different, right? Because as you were mentioning before, you're kind of traveling through different parts of the map that you may not experience all the time. Yeah, because the points are selected randomly in this game mode. And so that's a you might start the at the, the left far of right the corner and then pull back to the nearest corner. Scavenge what they actually made of the PV in every different order. To do. So there's a lot of <laughs> combinatorics in learning how to not just Who knows? play the mode, but in, in learning like, hey, if we're going to be going from <laughs> this point to that point, what's the right route to take? What are we going to do if the enemy team does this? Or, hey... We think we saw that Brigida alone over there. Maybe we, we take the opportunity to go over there and try to get an easy pick for us. And there's a lot of different things that you can be thinking yeah. about and doing just as you're learning how to play the mode and learning how to move around the map. And, and I think we see it when I know we get some of these clips at the start of these, right, with the top-down POV of just how expansive, how big these maps are. Uh, Daniel, kind of like, ex you know, what, what should people expect that help? Like, <laughs> Explicit dissing today, like Scorpio this? Pro. Like, oh. Sure, Storm, um, sure. I, I think people are going to be really impressed. Um, I mean, these maps are so big, we're able to pack more theming um, mm -hmm. and, and more narrative into these than any of our other maps, right? I and mean, you're going to see things like uh, Omnic temples, marketplaces, uh, mm -hmm. refineries, palaces, uh, gardens, you know, you name Yeah, I can't it. wait to just stuff. fly through that map in spectator mode. <laughs> Probably so all nice. The story and lore you guys have packed into some of these. They're yeah, it's like, interesting. Hey, the point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being in the Hanamura Arcade, right? Right, yeah. It's hard to get out of that spawn room. But the, a lot of these maps, um, they are connected to our lore. Sur Suravasa, Mandata's learning simple, learning, learning mm -hmm. center, was built um, near Suravasa, you know, and Mandata was Zenyatta's teacher. Uh, and so we have um, a lot of the maps that we are building now, a lot of the maps in Overwatch 2, um, even though we might not have communicated it yet to players, they're all involved in the story that we want to be telling um, starting in season six with our story missions, but going into the future. So like, I'm kind of excited for people to, you, you know, like later down the line, jump into one of these places and be like, oh, I see how that was connected. That's really neat. Right, and to just see, uh, yeah, just the expansiveness, right? And just how big the, you know, uh, locations are uh, that we're gonna have here for Flashpoint. Uh, Daniel, how complex was this to do? I mean, realistically, I mean, that had to be really difficult. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot of back and forth. Um, we had some really good support from our tech art and our engineers, um, and, you know, we had to solve a lot of development problems, right? Getting everything to fit in memory. Um, you can, you know, teleport from one end of the map to the other at any given moment, right? Um, with certain. Oh my God! Yourself. The early and, versions. Um, scale man. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, there he <laughs> is. Yeah. I See, love the, the A posing you know? people there. You have to have those, oh. or you build something just way too big. <laughs> it, uh, it, it's so wow. incredible to be. To see this stuff like wow. just that turns into you know what we just saw. Bro. I mean, yeah. And you can see we, we stick wow. as close as we can to the original block out to you know maintain the integrity of that gameplay, right? Because that's where uh you know the fun is found, right? And but what are the aid posing like people that, there? Like, what are they doing there? Yeah, it's really gameplay first, right? And What's the point? We go about and like support that with the art and whatnot. Oh, I like that. Yeah, gameplay first. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> way to go. Uh man, uh Thank you guys so much for joining me here today. Uh, Flashpoint, you know, player progression. Is that it? Both look Is that amazing. the end of the stream? Uh, anything you want to say? Oh, are we going to get out? some yeah, announcements? One, thank you for having us. Thank you for letting us talk about um, Overwatch 2 Invasion. It's a season that we're, like, so incredibly excited about. And it's not just because of Flashpoint or the progression system or the story missions or Hero Mastery. We have a new hero coming out. That season, we have an event mission for people to play. Um, we have another event. Bro, look at the season map! That's coming. There's like so much um, as a part of this season. Yeah. We're so excited for it. So, yeah, I, I think we could probably talk about this all day <laughs> if you if you let us. So, thank you. Please I'll talk about that all day. I would listen. Yes. I mean, Suravasa is going to be... A whole lot of fun to play. Yeah. Uh, Dana, anything you want to say before we go? Um, I just can't wait to get this in front of people and, and play this with the, my friends and, and um, hear what the community thinks. Yeah, I, I think they're going to be super excited uh, to be able to jump into PvE, PvP, all the awesome content coming in Overwatch 2 Invasion. Uh, but that's going to be it for us for the Overwatch 2 Invasion reveal stream. Thanks so much for joining Let's us. Uh, oh, all right. Out and out, jump in and play it. Get ready. August 10th. All right. We'll see you there. All right. That's...
That's it. That was the stream of the invasion season. The biggest content update we ever had in Overwatch in one single season. For what they have shown, I'm incredibly hyped for this stuff. Like the flashpoint maps, I'm so... Bro, they look so big. It's almost like playing like on the fucking Battle Royale map. I still don't know how the game mode exactly works. I think I need to rewatch the stream at a at another point of time. But yeah, that's it with the reaction here. I really hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I make all much content all the time. And also follow me on Twitch because this stream is recorded on Twitch. So go there and follow me. Twitch.tv slash Scorpio OW. Let's go.